Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we are going to be in our first person shooter 5.2 series uh, and we're going to be adding in the thirst and the hunger bars, the functionality behind all that so that we can uh, then do the food and the healing kind of stuff um, down the line. So we're going to open up our player HUD to begin with and we've got these two icons we've never done anything with. But today we're going to change that. Um, I'm also going to get rid of that. Why does that not get? Let me get rid. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, doesn't matter. It's fine. It's a fine name. Uh, right. We're going to do the hunger first. So what we need to do is we obviously need to get it to uh, work out what hunger we have and things like that. And we've already got the value set up in our third person character. So we've got current hunger, max hunger. We've also got uh, current thirst. Uh, but we don't have a oh we do have a max thirst it's there great so uh, if you go into the details panel of that uh, icon the uh, burger for us uh, we're going to set the percentage we're going to bind that um, and there we go and we're just going to actually do something very simple we're just going to copy this and put it in here like so and uh if we pull this back we have a obviously this will affect our health so what we need to do is get the values um associated uh with uh thirst on hunger so get current hunger and get max hunger we can delete these two out and plug these in instead like so and we have an updated health value but we obviously need to get a updated hunger and change it to a float and plug those in here instead there like that and obviously plug the return value in don't forget to plug your in your uh value in because uh, a lot of people i found were having that issue where it didn't update and that was because they didn't have the update plugged in if we go to the event graph now where we have this why is this so far away oh my days um and then on event construct we just need to do exactly this and so to do that we can actually grab a few values from here um and put them into the event graph just to speed up some time plug those in now i know this is, looks a little bit messy but it's fine now oh, plug that into there like so and we need to do the same now just for the thirst so again bind create a new binding uh this is going to be thirst bar percentage and again we're going to create an updated thirst and uh, again i'm just going to copy uh, this code over it just saves me Typing a bunch of stuff out that I don't need to. There we go. Plug that in and plug that in. And just swap out the values for updated thirst, updated hunger, and get current thirst. There we go. Plug that into um, here and delete that one out. And get max thirst and plug this in and delete that now i have seen some comments on my videos before about using bindings and and the fact that they can be a little bit um uh costly to use and to be honest uh bindings don't use that much up they wouldn't have them in there if they were like game breaking to use i think that's something that you've got to remember and i think it also always depends on the kind of game that you're making but to update your first value outside of a binding is a lot of a lot of code and it's a lot more code that isn't is also going to be heavy because it's got to run that code right so you've got to kind of weigh up the options of what's what's going to be more detrimental to your code using a little binding 
or using a ton of code to check your health all the time and, and update it to the, the, the percentage bar. It, it, it's kind of one way or the other, and to be honest, I don't think any way is particularly better, but the binding is just a little bit more, you, you know, you don't have to worry so much about all the shit that's going on. It'll just update for you, um, which is nice. So I, I prefer to use bindings, but you guys might feel differently. I don't know. That's kind of up to you guys, you know? Uh, so um, now <clears throat> we've got stamina here, which is fine. That is fine. Um, but I need to um, now update my thirst and my hunger. Now, this will only do this. This will only work if um, it's uh, being pressed by stamina. So what I want to do is I want to drop one a second. But I want to use this timer. But this timer is set to 0 0.2. So it's going to run every 0 0.2 seconds. But and we'll lose one stamina. That means we lose a lot of stamina over this. The, this we lose about five stamina a second, which you know actually does sound kind of like a lot. But it, I, I personally, I think it's actually not too bad. But uh, what we want to do is we now want to get our hunger and our thirst working on this same event timer. But I don't want to lose as much as five a second. Otherwise, you're going to be eating a lot to stay alive. So. What I want to do is, uh, I also don't want it to be done on a button press. I want it to, to work constantly. Um, so it's going to be a very similar thing, but it will never go up. It's only ever going to go down. So you can kind of probably already see what is happening. Uh, we, we we're going to want this, basically. Um, so we should be able to hopefully also do both on the same line. But... We'll, we'll go we'll go with it it's fine so we're gonna get our current hunger i'm gonna get our current thirst oh we're also going to uh set our current hunger and we're also going to set our current thirst and uh i'm going to basically just minus this by zero Let's do 0 0.1. So we don't even use one every five seconds. We use one every 10, uh, every two seconds. I think that will work relatively nicely. Uh, we can also change this value up a lot. We could also set this as a loss value and we could have some conditions that make us lose it faster or, or less. You know, we, we can set that up uh, down the line if you want to. Let me know if that's something you'd kind of want to see at some point. But for now, we're just going to... Oh, I, I didn't mean to put the minus in there. 0 0.1. There we go. Uh, you can also change the value so you lose thirst more than you do hunger. I mean, again, it's, it, it all depends on the kind of game you're trying to make. So we're going to lose 0 0.1 hunger, but we're going to lose 0 0.15 thirst. Uh, every 0 0.2 seconds is the idea. And we don't need to have any conditions for gaining hunger because we're going to do that via food eating and thirst and, and water drinking and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so this is, should be all we need now for thirst and hunger for it to actually start working. We'll, we'll give it a try, though. And uh, if we just stand here for a little while, we should hopefully start to see some things start to happen. Um, like the thirst is going down. Uh, is it? I don't think it is going down. Did I set that up correctly? Oh, maybe because I haven't actually got it set to anything. <clears throat> Current hunger is 500, 500. Oh, it's because it's 500. Jesus, that would be why it's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, we might still increase it to one uh, to 500, but we'll, we'll set it back to 100 for now so we can actually see some change. Um, I, oh my gosh, why has it gone down so far already? Uh, what have I done wrong here? Oh, of course, that's why. Okay, current max thirst. Ah, that's why. So, don't forget to set your max to the to one hundred as well if you're testing it the way I'm testing it. Right now, let's play. There we go. And slowly but surely, we should see. I think I can see the water starting to go down. It is. Yeah. So it's working. So, uh, 
yeah, you need to obviously you'll need to play around with the values uh, a little bit. Um, but um, basically, it is working. So we've now got thirst and hunger going down. Now, eventually, we're going to have to obviously just determine whether uh, either of these are at zero. Because if either of them is zero, we will need to uh, eventually start taking our health. It's not something I'm going to be covering today, but we will be covering that in the future. Uh, I, I want to get items working, so I'll probably be covering all that stuff when I cover death after we've done items. But yeah, we will eventually need it that once it hits zero. So I might split these out and throw them pins eventually to uh, do a check to see if. Um, to see if one of them, like thirst or hunger, is at zero, and if it is at zero, um, then we'll start to take health. Uh, but that's something, as I say, I'll cover down the line. But hopefully, you found this useful. We've now got working thirst and um, hunger bars. Again, play with the figures as you see fit to get a better value for you, um, and then. Um, next episode now we're going to be tackling the next one in the strut which is uh I don't, i'm not going to do healing yet just because um uh i haven't obviously fleshed out the health bar so again that might come after we've done items uh, other items but we're going to do food next so i'm looking for an eating animation and then i'll be doing food and then we've just got these lovely uh, weapons to use. I'm going to do melee next because that's another nice, simple one. And then we'll cover the, the shooting, which I know is what everyone's waiting for. I know everyone's waiting for the shooting, but it's coming. It's co We're getting there, slowly but surely. These episodes are going along very nicely, and we'll, we'll, we'll get there. But, um, yeah, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you have, leave a little like. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. It's free to do. You can always change your mind down the line. Uh, and as always, much love. Take care. Bye.